The next software I want to discuss now is the Puritan Bennett 980 bi-level software. This bi-level software is really a sophisticated pressure control. Some may describe it as an SIMV pressure control. In this software, we'll see that flow and volume can vary, but also one of the unique things is that the strategy from an IE ratio perspective can be anywhere from a normal ratio all the way to a very inverse ratio, where some people call it airway pressure release ventilation. So let's look at the actual software. Currently, I'm starting in volume control ventilation. So for example, if someone was converting over, they may look and say, my target right now, we'll say was 500, and they may want to look and see, maybe that's approximately where I want my patient to be. So I'm going to start under the vent setup button. And I'm going to go over. And bi-level really works from neonates to adults, but it only works invasively. So I'm going to select bi-level as a mode over here. Now, what are the other selections I have? The mandatory type is pressure control. So it is a pressure control. There's not an option there. SI, so it really is an SIMV pressure control. And then you can also decide, do I want to support those spontaneous breaths with either pressure support or tube compensation or really nothing at all? So I will probably put on some pressure support for now. And then you also have types of triggering pressure and flow triggering. Now starting from left to right, you decide what kind of rate. And I'm going to start off with a normal ratio. So I'm going to say the rate is maybe 10. That's what I was on before. Uh, I've got a pressure of 20 right now, and this uh, pressure is over a lower pressure of 5, and so my upper pressure will attain 20, my lower pressure will be 5, so the difference between the two will determine your total volume. So right now I'm starting off at 15 centimeters of water pressure. The next variable is the time spent at high. Uh, some people may call it inspiratory time. I'm going to put this at a second, just for now. And then for pressure support, because this is kind of an SIMV strategy, I'll put in some pressure support. Uh, I'll just put in 10 for now. That pressure support is on top of PEEP. And so if I have five of the low pressure plus the 10 of pressure support, that's going to be a total of 15. Next, I'll move on to your traditional settings. You've got your flow sensitivity. You've got your O2 percentage. High pressure limit you're used to. Expiratory sensitivity, and once again, that's related to the use with the pressure support. It is a pressure control, so there is your rise time. And down below, you have these locks again. So the question is, what is the most important variable you want to set? Is it the inspiratory time? Is it the IE ratio? Or is it the release time? You might, may find that when you're doing the APRV approach, that you may want to use the uh, expiratory time or release time, time low, as the primary variable that you want to lock. But first, I'm going to start off with inspiratory time being locked. Now, when I have that lock set for inspiratory time, that pertains to any time someone changes the rate, it does not affect the inspiratory time. And I know it's hard to see that right in here, but that's basically as I'm adjusting this rate, you'll see that the inspiratory time stays locked. So with those settings, let's go ahead and accept them. So right now, the patient has a combination of mandatory breaths in green and spontaneous breaths in red. He can pull aggressively. He can get any kind of flow he wants, as you can see right there. He can take deeper breaths if he wants to take a deeper breath as well. And as we look at the top display up on here, we can see what his total rate might be, 26, 22. We can see the total volume is equal to around 416 right now. Minimum ventilation is 11.3. So as you think about certain targets, before I was on volume control of 500 milliliters. And if I wanted to get closer to that 500 milliliters, I have to look at this upper pressure limit setting and the lower PEEP setting. It's the difference between the two of those that determine how much total volume your patient will get in combination with that patient's compliance and resistance. So in this scenario, I'm going to go ahead and turn up the pressure a little bit up to 25. And just to demonstrate what happens to total volumes when you turn up the difference between the pressures. Take a couple of breaths. And now we can see that the pressure has gone up to actually 559. So it's that titration that will determine what, will, what kind of total volume your patient will receive. 
So this is what it looks like for conventional ventilation with some pressure support set. As mentioned, many people will use this in an inverse strategy, so let's go to what that looks like now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back into my settings. And I'm going to go ahead and set the expiratory lock here, time low. And I'm going to begin to dial that down because usually when you think about APRV, you're usually talking about time lows uh, around a second. Um, they can be longer, they can be shorter, but for my example, I'm going to go roughly around 0.8 seconds is what I'll use. Now when I was trying to dial this down, I noticed that I ran into a little problem and I couldn't go any further with the knob. And the reason for that is there are certain prompts when you get to a one to one ratio or a four to one ratio where we want to let the operator know that you are transitioning across that ratio. And so to continue, all I have to do is look right here and it says continue. So I'm just going to simply touch that continue button and then I can continue down and the next stop will be at a four to one ratio. It's four to one in the window right here and I'll press continue. So as mentioned, I'll probably come down to maybe a 0.80 uh, time low. And I'll press accept. And we'll notice that our breaths are going to change quite a bit here. So now I can see a really long extended time. Anytime I see red, spontaneous breath, patient goes up, he can breathe spontaneously at the top and then he has a very short release time. And so this allows that patient unrestricted breathing at the upper level. One of the nice features of the bi-level software is the active exhalation valve, which allows this ability to breathe at these inverse ratios very comfortably. Now as he's breathing on these breaths up on top, even though we have a very inverse mean airway pressure and pressure profile, we can look at the IA ratio and see that he's still at a basically a 1 to 1.8 in terms of the pattern that he's actually breathing. So adjustments now can be made either to the rate or I can adjust pressures if I want to uh, adjust the total volume. I can adjust the release time and then this pressure support now has changed quite a bit in terms of its function. So right now that pressure support is basically going to rise up 10 plus the 5 of PEEP that I have to a total of 15. Until I get the pressure support, for example, where it plus the lower, uh, the PEEP low, or shall we say the, the um, low pressure, exceeds the high pressure, you will not see any pressure support in an APRV type strategy. Because usually the release times are so short. So right now I've increased my pressure support up to 25. Now, when the patient takes a spontaneous breath, breath he gets uh, a little bit of pressure support up on top. So now our peak pressure on spontaneous breath is going up to 31. So you can augment those spontaneous breaths by increasing the pressure support if you want. I'll go up even higher. But you may have limits in terms of what the peak pressure is that you want to use on any given patient. So right now you can see those pressure support breaths and once again it's being supported at a higher level. I can also turn on tube compensation and so I'll go over and turn on TC instead and you can set the percentage of support you want from a tube compensation standpoint. You have to select the inner diameter of the actual endotracheal tube. There is a high inspired Tadelheim alarm limit as well as the type of artificial airway. Is it an ET tube or a trach tube? So now instead of that press support uh, being 5 or 10 centimeters, now you're getting whatever it is to overcome the imposed work from the artificial airway. So those are a couple adjuncts you can use to adjust the uh, bi-level software. Now I want to look at one more thing and I'm going to stop triggering the breath here to kind of point this out because it may be a little bit confusing sometimes. But initially when that breath goes up, there is a little bit of uh, extra pressure in the peak pressure. I'm set at 25 and in bi-level, it's going to stop pretty much as an absolute close to 25, but you'll notice our peak pressure is 27. That's because there's a centimeter and a half of pressure support built into the algorithm. We'll notice that that pressure is really happening in the initial phase and that if I look at the end inspiratory pressure, it does settle back down to 25. So if you're curious about, okay, I'm setting 25, how far is it really going to go up? About a centimeter and a half above your actual target for high pressure. 
Now, what alarms am I uh, concerned about in terms of using bi-level mode? The alarms are usually your typical ones. Nothing too major here, so we'll go under the alarm screen. And you have high pressure limits. You have respiratory rates, minute ventilations, mandatory high tolerance alarm limits. And because we're in a pressure-based mode of ventilation, it's always good to be very careful on that high tolerance alarm because if the patient's compliance should improve, you want to know right away whether or not the patient is getting a larger volume than what he had before so you can make adjustments in terms of a lung protective strategy. And then you have your spontaneous uh, tidal volume alarms, XL tidal volume alarms as well. And um, then you also have a high inspired uh, tidal volume alarm limit for things like the tube compensation software. So make sure all those are set appropriately. And then I'll hit the accept key. For further information, please consult the operator's manual.